In this video, I'm going to talk about my Next.js course, the ultimate Next.js course. For anyone who's interested in taking it, I'll show you a little preview of different modules and sections covered, uh, topics that we're going to talk about, and uh, specifically because Next.js 14 was also released, so you might wonder if I'm actually covering stuff or if anything has changed in Next.js 14 from 13. Uh, because I published this course in June this year, in 2023, when Nexus 13 was actually made stable. Uh, so a couple of questions that people had from me, so I thought I would create a short video actually talking about the course, explaining what it is inside, because right now there's no way for you to preview any of the modules, so I thought maybe i just show it to you so you know uh, what you're getting into if you're considering uh, actually taking the course. So on the course page, you can see the different modules we have and the tech stack that we're using, the information about me or what this course is about. There are some reviews from people who have actually taken the course and wrote something on Twitter that I posted it here. And some frequently asked questions here. Some of your questions might be answered already here. Uh, but nonetheless, once you actually go ahead, um, if, you, if you are on the landing page and you want to exit, there's a little uh, survey that you can fill up and tell me why you didn't purchase the course. So if you're uh, one of those people who don't think this is the right one, I would love to know why is that the case. So I'd appreciate it if you actually fill that up. So once you click the get started to go ahead uh, purchasing the course, it will take you to the Stripe checkout page where you can actually put in your payment information. And once that's done, it redirects you back to the site. Now, if you have created an account already, you could just log into your account and then you'd be able to access your course under the My Learning section, uh, which I'm going to show you in a second. But if it's your first time and you have never had an account before, um, it would email you a sign in link, which is going to help you sign in to the site. So it creates an account for you, picks up the purchase that you had, and then from there you can actually see the a course under your my learning section which i'm going to show you in a second i have to switch this to tabs so bear with me for a second so if i go now here in the second tab where i'm logged in to my account uh, you can see there's this my learning section you can access it by clicking on your avatar this is the my learning section also if you go to the courses page you now can see that you have purchased this course and you can go continue to learning. Even from the homepage where you see this course, you can now access it. This is something that I have recently updated uh, from a feedback of a couple of people who were confused how to access the course because you only could access it from under the My Learning section. But long story short, uh, you can pretty much access it from anywhere that you could see the courses on the site. And once you click on this, it would take you to the My Learning section where you would probably land on the welcome video that we have there. So there are different chapters here. As you can see, these are the same chapters that you can see on the course landing page. Each chapter, you can click on it. It has different videos. Um, so your first step, the first chapter is getting started. This is the introduction to Next.js and what it is. Um, creating your first app, styling, deploying, routing, which is pages, layouts, you know, links and navigations, dynamic routes or dynamic segments. Route groups, which is a new way in the app router. Suspense and streaming, again, another feature in Next.js 13. It was introduced in Next.js 13. Error boundaries, rendering, server versus client component, static versus dynamic rendering, kind of comparing it to how we used to do stuff in Next.js 12 as well. The different runtimes that you can run your code if it is on the server, serverless functions or middlewares as edge functions. The data fetching module is you know, data fetching and how easy it is to now fetch data inside your server components. But beyond that, we talk about caching, revalidating server actions, which is a way to mutate your data. So you would expose functions uh, that you can then call them inside your server components or client components, and uh, they would just perform whatever task on the server that you assign them to. There is no need to introduce an API layer in between to talk from your client side to your server side. You can just expose functions. Now, the only difference that Next.js 14 actually has with Next.js 13 is that server actions are now stable. In Next.js 13, server actions were still experimental. And the only API change we have in Next.js 14 
is that now server actions are stable. Now that I, now that I talked about Next.js 14, let me also mention this. There's no new APIs in Next.js 14 because I have folks asking me, well, we just learned Next.js 13. Has there been any new changes, any new APIs that we need to learn? There isn't. Uh, there's going to be some features in future probably added to Next.js 14, like partial pre-rendering. But right now, that's that's not even accessible if you want to use it. The only thing that has changed is that server actions are stable. So you don't have to pass that experimental flag in your Next.js config, you can just use it. And uh, so in the data fetching, I also have a section migrating from Next.js 12 or inside the pages directory, really, because you can still use the pages router inside Next.js 14. Uh, you don't have to use the app router, which is built on top of server components. You can still have Next.js 14, so the latest Next.js, but still use the pages router or the old way of creating Next.js apps. And that's not going to be deprecated in the foreseeable future. I don't see any reason why you would want to use that because uh, the app router is much more intuitive and powerful. But if you are coming from an application that's actually built in the pages router and you don't want to right now migrate everything to the app router uh, you can do an incremental migration maybe keep whatever you have and only build new pages in the app router but i do have like a uh, module here or a chapter here where i talk about migrating from the pages router and this is a specifically talking about uh, get server side props get static props and get static paths so your static generation, incremental static regeneration, and static side, uh, and server-side rendering, and how you would just do those stuff in uh, the app router. Because in the pages router, they had specific functions and APIs you could call. So if you wanted to turn a page into server-side render page, you, you just had to export get server-side props function from it. If you wanted to turn it static, you just had to export the get static props from it. But how would you do those stuff in the app router? Because we don't, we no longer have those specific APIs in Next.js. So that's actually contrasting. We're talking about uh, that stuff and also caching and revalidation. Uh, we do also have a chapter for Next.js. Let me just close this chapter so we're not running out of the room or it's, not, it's less confusing. So next. Uh, JS components are the image component, the font script, and the new metadata API in, in the app router. We then talk about advanced routing, which is route handlers. This is your API endpoints in the app router. Middleware function, which we already had in Next.js uh, 12 and before. Same thing, nothing, nothing has changed. Internationalization has changed, so this is different. Um, again, I have had a couple of videos on the channel implementing internationalization and chaining middleware functions or uh, because if you're using middle version internationalization and as you can see here I have new videos added to our list here so anytime there is a new change uh, uh, in Next.js I'll update the course I'll add videos or just like these ones that have been added recently so it's not on a stale course I, I keep updating this course as any change happens or if I figure out or I build a new project or still add it here it's not only when an update happens in, in Next.js for example this chain middleware functions it's not an update in Next.js 14 it's just a method for you to run or stack your middlewares on top of each other and I just added it here because it's very useful right now in Next.js. You can only export one middleware functions. And if you want to do multiple logics, you have to combine them in that one function. This chaining allows you to stack these middlewares on top of each other, something like Express.js middlewares. So if you haven't watched this video, I will link it in the cart or just go find it. It's a good video where you can just have separate functions uh, that have separate concerns uh, on performing different logics, logics, and then you would just stack them on top of each other. Uh, the authentication is just implementing authentication in Next.js. Uh, I have covered two different technologies or two different libraries. NextAuth, which is an open source library you can use to implement your authentication, and also Clerk, which is a paid service. They do have a free tier, but it's a paid hosted authentication service that comes with pre-built components that you could just slap in your project and uh, without having to worry about implementing it yourself, just use 
Clark. Now the TypeScript section only talks about setting up your project with TypeScript and how you can benefit from the TypeScript plugin that was introduced in Next.js. And what will be different from uh, Next.js perspective, it, it doesn't actually contain any project inside of it. So the code or the types inside of it are, is limited. It's just uh, that first stepping stone of actually changing uh, your JS projects to TypeScript or starting from with a TypeScript project and it also talks about uh, the different plugins or features that comes in when you're actually using uh, the Next.js version of the TypeScript rather than the TypeScript that comes with your VS Code. Uh, I may add more stuff to this. For example, one thing that can be beneficial here is how would you type different uh, React hooks that's something that will be relevant here. Even though we don't use that much React hooks in the app router, it's the user state or user effect or maybe context for sharing state uh, oftentimes. So that can be relevant, but oftentimes depending on the libraries and packages that you're using, uh, your specific requirements for TypeScript comes from the types from those packages rather than something that applies to everyone. And then last thing is a project section where uh, we do have an e-commerce project. This is using Next.js TypeScript and Swell. And that's swell.is or is. Uh, it's a headless e-commerce platform that supports subscriptions built in. It's an API first. So it's just like a backend for your e-commerce products and data. And then you can just uh, communicate with that backend via the API. So we've built this project um, that I can actually show here. I think it's next ecom or no, it's not this one. So it's next swell. So this is the project that we're going to build together. Uh, it has different categories and different products. And if I make this a smaller, you'd be able to see that we have this um, kind of sub layout or a nested layout inside of our application where we're showing different categories of products where you can you know, filter uh, based on different categories. You can also sort, and all of this is using server components, and you can see it's it's pretty fast. Um, it has been cached, so you can select different products, going back to a product that has maybe um, you know different images and different sizes. This comes from Swell, so it's pretty easy to implement this. Uh, the price updates there, and then you have this subscription, so you can choose, define different plans for your subscriptions, and select, add them to cart. And then we have this cart here that you can see what you have selected. It has a host to check out. So Swell overall is a great platform for e-commerce if you're thinking of building e-commerce. And we do go over you know, implementing all these features in this uh, course. The next one is the middleware project. Uh, this is actually implementing authentication and internationalization in one uh, using that chain middleware function. Um, and I'm planning to add more projects here now that the APIs from Next.js are stable, so there is no new APIs coming up uh, other than the updates that might happen here. I'm planning to add more projects to this, so not only you learn the concepts throughout the previous nine chapters or modules, but you, have, but you actually have access to uh, real world use cases and projects here, you know, using different CMSs maybe. I am uh, creating a project with Prismic. I know it, it will be added here soon. So creating a CMS or backing your data with a CMS and how you would go about implementing it here, adding preview features and whatnot, uh, and more projects. So you have access to the code for all of those projects. You could see best practices implemented in projects, uh, and you can use that as an extra practice to hone your skills of what you have learned in the previous nine chapters by actually building these new projects that you can maybe build out for clients or showcase in your portfolio. So this is a high level of what you get in the course. I think I covered uh, most of what you need to know. Uh, just a quick note that there is now a special discount uh, going on on the course celebrating 10K, uh, which I did have a video on it after the next year's conf. Uh, so. Uh, right now, there's a discount on the course if you're interested in buying it. 
you can benefit from that. And other than that, uh, if you had any questions, again, hit me up. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Bye-bye.